okay, well, let's say someone has a gun to your head yeah. and you have a trillion embryos there oh, yeah. and then you have a newborn there and you either have to flush the trillion embryos down the toilet or put them in an incinerator or, you know, throw the baby off the roof over there. Okay, well that that moved somebody. What what moved you? Why did you move? Where are we today, Professor? We are at Williams College. And what are you a professor of? I'm a professor of biology. That is impressive. And you, sir, you're a professor here. I am. What are you a professor of? Philosophy. And you, sir, who are you? I'm Warren Smith. Today we're going to do, it is okay to design your own baby. So everybody get the rules, right? Five, four, three, two, one, move. Okay, tell them why you strongly disagree. I really just find it creepy. <laughs> I, have a, I have an innate sense of the creepiness of it at this point. I think there could be horrible consequences of trying to design our own babies. Like what? I think there's a lot that we don't understand, and I think in the attempt to kind of deal with complex systems um, that we don't fully understand, we might lead to a lot of horrible unintended consequences. And, oh, oh. Okay, okay. The, uh, is, 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 is the argument that it could lead to unintended consequences enough to make you move to the neutral? No, because we can always improve and understand these consequences, and then his argument will have no power in the future. How can you not design a babe if you know that you carry a cystic fibrosis gene or another gene that can lead to all kinds of horrible outcomes? Wouldn't you be better off preventing these outcomes from coming to life if you can? If that's the case, how come you're not in the agree? Because I don't think that all outcomes should be manipulated, but the outcomes that are negative for life. Okay, so you're in the neutral. You mm -hmm. oh wow, you moved. You you moved. <laughs> I, I'm I'm coming to say, did either one of those arguments persuade you to move one way or the yes, other? Yes, I knew nothing about this, which I was going neutral till I could hear a bit more, okay. and that was interesting. Enough, interesting enough to move. Uh, yeah, I'll go slightly agree. Okay, I'm like okay, that might probably outweighs, but there's definitely sounds like there's going to be potential dangers. Okay, why did you move from strongly disagree to disagree? Because I think there's a difference between designing our own babies, like just deciding every trait that you want something to have from the beginning and using something as a kind of therapy. So I think maybe there might be horrible risks associated with certain diseases where even if you didn't fully understand something, interfering in that way to avoid something that's truly awful might, might actually be okay. But I'm still, you know, I think- You still of, disagree. I, well, I, th I think of design our own baby as meaning more like you get to pick all the traits for your baby out of a catalog and then you're going to send away. Like hair gonna, color or something. Yeah, hair color, eye color, you know, height, whatever, ability to jump. Okay. And you're going to just try to mess with all Evolution. sorts of things. Well, yeah, or just, you know, luck. Okay, okay. Know. Go back to the neutral. Go back right, to the neutral. Everybody go to the neutral. Everybody go back to neutral. Some form of eugenics are okay. Move. You guys can freak out or you can play. It's totally up to you. We'll have you the next time. We'd love to have you play the game. Strongly disagree. Jeez. I'm pretty uninformed. Neutral. What, uh, like we, what do we mean by some like, form of eugenics? Well, you tell I mean, me. You, uh, I mean, you that's... tell me. Will you tell me? I don't know. I mean, if you think of like selective breeding of plants, is that eugenics? Yeah. Or are we talking so, about some form of eugenics in, in in humans? In, in humans. humans. In okay. humans. Yeah. Then then I'm I'm more on the disagree side still. Okay. So you still disagree? Yeah. It's human eugenics. Yeah. So where are you? You disagree? Yeah. I need to know the I need to know humans. the particulars. So do we mean like eugenics by killing people or by sterilizing We're people? We're coming to that. We're coming to that. That's why I still. You you were slightly disagree, but then you yeah, went to neutral. To be logically consistent. Earlier, the the potential for remedies, I guess. But I'm I'm what I need to learn more about is what phase does this occur in? Is the baby be before? Is it? I imagine it's like within before the birth. any time before birth. So anyway, I'll have to learn more about that. So okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You're 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 on the slightly agree. Isn't 
every abortion that happens for a Down syndrome baby, a form of eugenics. And aren't we all happy that this is happening and we are decreasing suffering in the world? Is that not eugenics? I would say many people think that it is a bad thing that those abortions happen. What do you think? Let's see. Um, I can understand the position from a lot of parents, though. So I'm still neutral on that one, too. Okay, go back to the neutral. Go back to the neutral, please. New claim. If we could tell which embryos will likely have a high IQ, I would only pick those. Move. Tell them why you strongly disagree. Well, I don't think that whether or not somebody can have a good or a meaningful life is completely determined by their IQ. Is it That's partially it. determined by their IQ? Your IQ is something that might play into things, but I think some people with a very high IQ can have much worse lives and some people with a very low IQ. You are on slightly disagree. Do you agree with his reasoning? I agree with his reasoning. And my only reason for being on is lightly and not completely disagreeing is that I do think that extreme low forms of IQ ah. would potentially lead to lower quality of life. So I'm talking about really, really extremely low forms, like some kinds of like, like Peter Singer's Blow 25. Yeah, <laughs> okay. something like that, okay. I suppose. Did that convince you to go to slightly disagree? Mm, yeah, because uh, if we start ending life based on qu the quality of that life... You're ending life anyway, because you're creating them in a Petri dish. So the question is, are you selecting one or are you picking one at random? So all of the other ones will die. So, so that if you call them alive at the one stage, okay. at the one cell stage. So, so this be... is not about killing anyone, it's about choosing which one will leave? Okay, I'm hesitant about uh, bringing life in in the petri dish, I guess. So you are against in vitro fertilization? I guess if that's what it, then I guess I'm not then, not completely. Cause I mean, I understand that, I don't, I'm, I'm not too informed on this, so I didn't know that that's what the process of in vitro is. Yes, it, the process of in vitro will generate 10 or so embryos and only mm -hmm. one will come to life. So which now, one do you What about the choose? other ones? They're thrown away. Or they're frozen in some cases. Some cases, parents try to save a few for the future. But at some point, they've got to be thrown away. Yes, at some point, they'll be thrown away. OK, go back to the neutral, please. Go back to the neutral. In vitro fertilization is morally OK. Move. You're thinking about it. You're on strongly agree. You can remain on, you can be on the neutral in vitro yeah. fertilizer. Okay, why, t why don't you t tell, tell them your argument for why you strongly agree that in vitro fertilization is morally okay. I think in vitro fertilization gives opportunity for people who would not be able to have babies otherwise, often because they start late in life. And nowadays life pushes us to having kids later. People have, that choose to have in vitro fertilization will typically be very good parents. And I have no opposition of doing this. I do not have any problems of disposing of one-celled embryos that, you know, this happens normally during our cycles, right? Oftentimes, embryos do not attach and are normally discarded. So this is happening naturally. If you have it in vitro, it doesn't make it any more evil, in my opinion. Did she say anything that yeah. would move you to move to the agree? She did. That was pretty compelling. What did she say that caused you to move to the agree? The fact that these are for parents that would not otherwise be able to have these children. The fact that this is already occurring and so then I wouldn't be treated the same as a loss of life. And I think we in general want to make it easier for to bring life into this world rather than difficult for those families. And it's not for me, it's not an issue whether these are qualified parents or not. I wouldn't think about it like that. Did she say anything that would cause you to move to the slightly agree? Yeah, so I think when I say I'm neutral here, I, what I, I think I really am is like deeply ambivalent. Mm. Like I have certain like considerations that push me in one direction, certain considerations that push me in another. And 
I honestly don't know how to sort through them. So, you know, I do think that infertility can be a horrible thing and can really make people's lives worse and in vitro fertilization can sometimes be a real boon to those people. On the other hand, I wonder if there's a kind of slippery slope that we get on when doing things like that, which has to do with embryo selection. It has to do with, you know, the, the playing God kind of side of things. And that makes me have some like ethical pause, but not, I mean, right. if you ask, right. would I make in vitro fertilization illegal? illegal yeah. I don't think that I, I don't think that I have a Okay. Consistent let, enough view or a let, well thought up enough view. Let to, me ask this. Go back act. go back to the neutral, please. In vitro fertilization plus surrogacy is morally okay. Move. In vitro fertilization plus surrogacy. I don't know what that is really. I'll, talk, I'll can hear you, you out first. You can, can you please that, explain yeah. that to them? This is a philosopher and a public intellectual. <laughs> so let's say a couple of gay men want to have kids. They can't because kids need a, a, an egg to develop. Uh, they can buy an egg from someone else and have that egg gestate in yet someone else. So usually it involves a three-parent uh, um, situation uh, where a mother is rented to carry a pregnancy. She's paid, she's, she's paid. paid to have a pregnancy. And I do have some issues with that, therefore I don't stand on the strongly agree, because... Okay, a, don't say yeah. the issues yet, don't say it. Is it clear? Yes. Is that clear with surrogacy and in vitro fertilization? Is that yeah. clear? Okay, so you want to move now based upon her explanation? Okay, what about that, why? I, we have so many children that are looking for homes already. It's, I, could, it's, I feel like if anything we could do to encourage adoption, though, it's a, it's a tricky one, so I'm not quite resolved on it yet. Something about like the financial aspect to it, where some people could just turn it into a business. But then again, the idea of a free country, if you want to do something like rent your room, I don't know, it's just, it just seems like that would be part of a free country, but it's, I, there's definitely moral questions. Do you think there are moral questions? I do, so I still have like the ambivalence about in vitro fertilization and the creation of more embryos and you're gonna use, so they're still ambivalent about that. So if I add something else to that, I stay ambivalent. But I also think that there's a, I think maybe that part of what Luan is saying is there's something about the commodification of it all that like leads me to a certain kind of like extra, like moral problem that I don't know how to understand. So like turning it into, like a business of a certain kind. Do you have problems with other things that are commodified or is it just Some, that? right? Oh, I okay. think that there are probably some things you probably shouldn't be able to sell, I think. You know, like what? Sure. Maybe organs. Maybe you can't sell yourself into slavery. I think there's probably oh, all like sorts of- Oh, like your kids, of, like your kids. Not just your kids, yourself. I think there are probably certain things that you can't have somebody else come to own as a result of your getting money for it. I think that there'd be serious problems with that. Do you have problems with the commodification of surrogacy, the commodification of the womb? I do have some problems, and that's not why I am in the strongly agree. I, I, the, the problems are that a lot of times these, these surrogacies are not even in the U.S. They have like huge Indian centers where they are renting women for, right. you know, for nothing. So it's a, it's a very di difficult situation. I mean, if this was all willing people and one was making a lot of money and they were all like, you know, in the same socioeconomic class and there was no possibility of exploitation. And, but we know that that's not the case. So it's hard to fully agree with, uh, with a process like that. There might be some situations where it would hold, but many situations where it wouldn't, so. Okay, go back to the neutral real quick. Women should be able to sell their own eggs and womb. Move. Women should be able to sell their own eggs and womb. Why are you too neutral? I'm a little uneasy about what that would mean. Um, what are the implications of that? You know, uh, it also brings a little bit of the greedy problems. Like, do we want the greediest people to be the ones reproducing the most? You know, what would be the kinds of barriers, etc.? It's 
not like fully comfortable with that one. Okay, and you're neutral because why? I just feel like I'm too uninformed on it. Yeah. But yeah. then the topic we just spoke about where people are paid surrogacy, right? How would we how would we have surrogacy if we don't have people with the ability to be paid to do it though? And you why do you disagree? Yeah, I think as I was saying before, I worry about the commodification of certain sorts of things and the creation of markets around them. I, I think there's two issues that I've come to think of in part because of what uh, Professor Moroja said, which is, would I think that a kind of in vitro fertilization of the following kind was okay? You try to join a sperm and an egg because a couple is having problems having that happen without assistance. And then if it works, you implant it. If it doesn't work, you don't implant it. Like somehow that seems like less bad to me, although I can't come up with a principled way of distinguishing, I was just gonna ask creating you 20 at the same time and then discarding 19. But really you're just creating 20 at different times. So I'm not sure, there's like a feeling I have about it, but I'm not sure. Are it's feelings like an accurate grounded. guide to morality? I think feelings are in part a very good guide that we have to making moral judgments. I if that were the correct. case, then wouldn't people from different cultures have the same feelings about things? I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that it's a foolproof guide. I'm saying that a lot of times the way that you react to a situation is often <laughs> the way by which you come to think about what it is that's morally relevant about the situation. So I'm not saying that, you know, unthought through feelings should be determinative or authoritative. I think what I'm saying is that your initial feeling about a situation can sometimes okay. be a sign to you that yeah. something's going on. Okay, new claim. One embryo has the same moral worth as a newborn. Move. One embryo. One embryo. You, okay. 10 embryos have the same moral, <laughs> what, what, go ahead. How can I quantify like well, that? That's, that's, like it's, it's like you're in the big leagues now, doctor. <laughs> ten, ten embryos have the same moral worth as a newborn. Move. One million embryos have the same moral worth as a newborn. One trillion embryos have the same moral worth as a newborn. Are you thinking? What part made you think? At, at ten, a hundred, a trillion, or what? Oh, just the idea of assigning numerical values to moral worth is just really hard for me. I don't know, well, let's I say don't that, know how to think about it. Okay, well, let's say someone has a gun to your head yeah. and you have a trillion embryos there yeah. and then you have a newborn there and you either have to flush the trillion embryos down the toilet or, I don't know, however, however one would put them in an incinerator or, you know, throw the baby off the roof over there. Okay, well that that moved somebody. What what moved you? Why did you move? I uh, the two just logically. I'm like, I, I, it would be a clear choice, and also adhering to like expertise is also a way that we dissect inf or we digest information. You mean her expertise? Yeah, as a as a professor of biology, this well, is professor her. of moral worth. But what if we had a professor of biology who stood on the strongly agree? Uh, I'd the, between the scenario you just presented, like it would still. I understand that you would, yeah, I would, I would throw the baby. So you would sooner incinerate a trillion embryos than you would throw one baby from that rooftop? I, I probably wouldn't, no, I wouldn't <laughs> burn the baby. <laughs> no, but you have a gun to your head and everybody's head here. You have to do one, you have to throw. Yeah, I wouldn't Can throw I the baby. Can I just take one for the team? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Can I just be like, I'm, I'm the, whatever, man, just shoot me, I guess. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> then they're gonna get everybody else they're here They're gonna too. get That's everybody, oh my God, so this you is gotta, like, yeah. This is like the Jim and, the Botanist case. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. And, and, and then there's a nuclear yeah. bomb in Chicago. They're okay, going to blow up Chicago, yeah. too. So what are you going to do? What am I going to do or yeah, what gonna, ought I do? What or would what? you do? Are you going to toss the baby or incinerate the embryos? Trillion, one trillion of I them. I think I couldn't bring myself to toss a baby off a roof. So I think I might be able to. The I might be able to bring myself to do that psychologically. I don't know if it would be right. And there's something weird about the... These are a trillion embryos. Are they like... What stage of development are they at? Are early they, stages. Are they, early stages. Are they like arrested at that stage, or are they like in development toward becoming fully developed? 
would they become fully developed if I didn't incinerate them? These are questions where like, you know, it's, it starts to sound like at some point, I mean, I think probably embryos have some moral worth. Yeah, well, that's, if we that's think, what I'm right, getting to. Yeah, yeah. and if we what, think what, that what, some yeah. is quantifiable, then there's got to be some number you'd pick. So that's here's correct. the thing, right? right? Like you that's could right. shoot somebody in the head or you could ameliorate 10 million mild headaches. I mean, okay. is there headaches are bad? All right. Life is good. Is there okay. some number of headaches? That, what, if, you know, what if it wasn't tossing a baby, but it was just sticking a needle in its arm that it didn't feel and killing it that way? Would that change your moral calculus? No, I wouldn't kill the baby. Is the, the, you, you wouldn't kill the baby? I wouldn't kill the baby. I would much rather incinerate the trillion embryos than kill one baby because the baby is developed, whereas the others are in potential. They're not yet developed. Many of them will never develop. Even if they were implanted, the majority of implantation fail. I, I, for me, it's more like those embryos have so close to zero that I can add a lot of them before I have... Even a, a trillion? Even, even a trillion. A trillion is beyond my comprehension Mine capacity. Mine too. Okay, so let, let me ask you this question then. What if you didn't have to kill the baby but like Reed would, Reed would kill the baby. Would you then tell Reed to kill the baby so you wouldn't deal with the psychological? No, I would still. You'd still do the embryos. You'd yes, still do I the, would still do the embryos. Would you still do the? Would you still do the embryos? Yeah, I feel like my knowledge on the embryos <laughs> and the stage of life are, are pro-life um, people. Are they arguing that embryos are, are life equal to babies? Well, they're okay. arguing that they're life. Okay. Yeah, I. I don't know. A I wouldn't trillion, be able to kill the baby. Big I, yeah, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, th these things, right, get you. I mean, this is a kind of thought experiment way of doing things. Like, if you ask Luana, say it's a million embryos that are at four months, and you have to cause spontaneous abortions in a million women versus kill a baby. I mean, that, that starts to, it I don't even you, know how well, I would I mean, think it helps you tease out how you weigh things. Yeah, so there's this kind of question. I mean, either embryos have some moral worth or they don't have any moral right, worth. Right. Either moral worth is, it can be mapped in some way to a number. Or they don't or have moral worth, they just have worth. Number. Well, well, like, I don't know, like financial worth? I mean, like what? Well, I mean, if we live in a... Do they I, merit moral consideration in that's our decision-making, yeah, right? Yeah, and then yeah. if, if that is something that you can attach a number to, then it follows from the nature of numbers that if you add enough small right. things that's together, you get bigger than a okay. big thing, right? I mean, but yeah. the, I think the other, the other thing is I think that if you're talking about something at a few stages where it may or may not survive, even if implanted, that oh. seems relevantly different than something that's already yeah. probably going to result in a newborn if left alone. Okay. <laughs> like okay. that seems so I, I would I would ask Luana that one. All right. So. All right. I think we're good. I think we got the topic. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> My goodness. My goodness, there's a lot of deep thought over here going on.